Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at Ninja Tables Pro. Ninja Tables comes in a free and a pro version and has been around since 2017. I purchased it three years ago and use it on my websites. A big advantage to displaying data in tables is that they are space efficient and it's easy to quickly scan through the rows. In addition to just displaying data, Ninja Tables also has the ability to format, sort, filter, and add formulas. Tables are often used for numerical reports, but using tables also makes sense for displaying any data compact enough that it can be displayed in a row, especially if you need to format the column values or include a custom field. In this video, I'm going to do a quick tour and then I'm going to do a walkthrough using Ninja Tables Pro to display the records from a custom post type. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps to spread the word about the channel. This is the free version of Ninja Tables in the WordPress plugin directory. You can see it has more than 70,000 active installs. It's got more than 270 five-star reviews with a four and a half star average, and nine out of 16 support issues have been resolved in the last two months. This is the Ninja Tables website where they have a discussion of the features, they have some product comparisons, and you have access to documentation. The documentation is extensive and good, and this is the current sale pricing on their lifetime plans. So I have a test site here. I've got the free cadence theme, some demo post data, and a custom post type called books. If we go and look at the plugin list, you can see that I have Ninja Tables Pro installed, but I haven't activated it yet because I wanted to do a quick tour of the free version before activating the pro version and doing the walkthrough. So when you install Ninja Tables, then you get a menu area here in the admin, and there are several pages. Tables, this is where you go to create a new table. And if you had tables already created, they would be listed here. Import and Tools, you'll notice the menu items on the left, and up here, Tools and Settings. So those kind of repeat there. You can import from CSV or JSON, regular JSON or from Ninja Table exports. And then they also support importing from Table Press, Data Tables Generator, and Ultimate Tables. There are some global appearance settings. You can use Semantic UI, Bootstrap 4, or Bootstrap 3 and Semantic UI is the default. It's a nice, simple option. And then you can check these options here, and then when you create a new table, these defaults will be applied. Okay. By default, only the administrator has access to manage the tables, but if you have Pro, then you can give other roles access. Here you have some options on how JavaScript error handling is done. You can log to the console, you can handle the errors but don't log them, or don't handle global errors. And then Ninja Tables keeps a cache of the table to serve it up quickly, and you can clear that if you need to. Then there's the option to integrate charts, and this is actually another plugin it's free in the WordPress plugin directory. You can see Ninja Charts. It's got more than 2,000 active installs and these different types of charts. So these are the menu items that are exposed in the free version. Let's go back to Tables to create a new one because there's some more options here. This is the default way to create a table and this is what I use. There's a new drag and drop option here. I don't think it has as many options as the default one. So that's why I prefer the default one. There's import, there's connect fluent forms. And then these are pro features. You can display a table of posts or custom post type data. You can connect Google Sheets. 
you can connect an external CSV, and you can also construct your own SQL query. So this is pretty cool. It's definitely a power user feature, but using a custom query, you can get the exact data that you need. Let's go and activate the pro version now. Okay, it's activated. Let's go back and go to create a table. This is the default. This is where you step through creating the table column by column and a ton of options are exposed. This is the one that I'm going to use here. Basically, you start out and you pick your custom post type and some fields, and then you go into, it transitions then into this default editor. So it's just kind of a starting point to be able to pick your custom post type easier. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you what fields we have defined for the book custom post type. This has got the regular title, the content, there's a custom taxonomy called genres, and we have the featured image, we have the author's photo, author's website, a link to the author's website, and a reviewer rating. So now let's go and let's create our table, and we're going to create a table for the custom post type. Okay, so I'm going to go to WP Posts, I'm going to give it a title, Book Reviews, I pick the custom post type or post type I'm going to use. This is just kind of a shortcut to getting started with the custom post type. Now I can do next and these are some fields from the book custom post type. So you pick fields that you want like I would like the title and the excerpt. and the genre. And there are more fields, like the custom fields will pick up in the next step. You can add a condition here if you want. And so this table configuration here, this is exactly what you get if you just go into the default table editor. So what we've done is we've gotten kind of a quick start. You'll notice a couple of things here on this page. Here is where you would change the name there is a short code that you can copy and then paste anywhere that short codes are allowed. That's one way that you can add your table. When we go into Gutenberg, we'll see there's a block there where we can pick our table also. Okay, so these are the rows. We can change the query settings and we can add a new column here and we'll come back for that. But just as an overview, here you can rearrange the columns. You can edit them, you can add a column, their rendering settings, custom filters, buttons, and language settings. These are style options. That blue is a little too much for me. <laughs> I thought it would be a lighter blue, so I'm going to go to default, which looks nicer. You can preview for tablet and mobile. And you see it automatically added a search widget to the top of the table for us. There's the option to have a table be front end editable. You can add custom CSS or custom JavaScript. And this is an import export area. Up here, there's a documentation and there's the option to preview the table. Okay, so let's go back and I wanna add a new column. This is going to be the book cover, which is the featured image. So here you select data type. You notice that there isn't one that is an image field. And I think for featured image, you would select an HTML field. You have the option whether or not to show it on smaller devices. See, there's the option to pick a custom field, an ACF field, something from post meta add a short code, computed value, or HTML, or a featured image. And I'll just set a size of medium large. And you have the option to have it be a link. So I'll turn that on. Let's go and add another column. And we'll call this rating. And this is going to be numeric. Field type is advanced custom field. 
and the name of the field is reviewer rating. So we see we got our cover image, which looks pretty nice. Ah, and there's our reviewer rating. Great. So let's go and let's arrange these. Let's put the cover first. And then we have title, excerpt, genre, and rating. So I want to show you how you can combine columns. Let's go to the title column and let's change the name to book. And I want to go to transform value. And here now I can concatenate fields basically or perform a formula operation on a field. But basically in this column that has the title, I want to add the post title. You take this kind of magic tag and then you can add HTML in here. And I want to add the post excerpt. Let's update this. And you see that it's got the excerpt here and excerpt there. So now what I want to do is hide this because we're using it already here. All right, and there's one more column then that we want to add. So let's go to this one and we'll call this one author website. And this is going to be a button link. The button text will be visit author's website. So for our background of our button, we'll make it a blue. Text color, we'll make white. And we'll skip border color. And the field type is an ACF field. And its value is author's website is the name of the ACF field. So I think things are looking pretty good. Let's go to table configuration. So we have cover book. This one's going to be hidden genre rating and author's website. So rendering settings and Ajax table looks fine. Custom filters. Well, let's add a custom filter. Sure, why not? We'll call this one genre. We'll say filter by genre. And this will be a select drop down. And the default will be all. We don't want to do manual entry of the types. Instead, what we'd like to do is we'd like to pick dynamic data from a table column. Okay, and it'll be genre. So basically, it's going to get the uh, list, a unique list of genres from this column. And we want it to be descending as text. We won't do multi-select. So we'll add that. We can have a button for a CSV export. We can have a print button if we want. And then there are options for where to put the button. And then here you can override the defaults if you're using a different language. I think we're good. Let's grab the short code. So I'm copying it to the clipboard. And now let's go and create a page. This will be called Book Reviews. There is a block here that allows us to pick our table. Unfortunately, it doesn't render a preview here, but that's okay. So I'm going to publish this and let's go view. So we see that we have the cover image, we have the title and the excerpt, we have the genre, we have the reviewer rating, and we have a link to the author's website. Let's try that out. Yeah, so there's John Grisham's website. Okay, we have a our front end filter here. So we'll filter by genre. There are the fantasy books. And here are the mystery books. 
and we can search. Let's go back to all. And we can search. We can pick the columns here we want to search in. Okay, we searched for island and there's Camino Island. Okay, if we want to, we can sort by rating. So those are the lowest rated ones to highest rated, or we can sort for the highest rated ones to lower rated ones. So what I wanted to show you with this walkthrough was how quickly and easily you could get a nice table created from some post or custom post type data. Ninja Table does have some advanced options. When you go to configuration and you're looking at a column, you have the option to add CSS classes, to set the max width of a column, to align the header and content, to disable it from search, to disable it from being sorted, to have a custom background or text color. You can conditionally format based on the cell value, transform value. I showed you how we concatenated two columns into one, but notice this option here is you can use Excel formulas as well. Okay, this is really powerful. I've used this. It's not the easiest thing in the world to use, but man, is it powerful. So you can run formulas across rows or across columns. These are the supported functions that you can use in your formulas. As you can see, there are a ton of them. Okay, so lots of number and string and date functions that you can use. So that's the tour of the Ninja Tables admin area and a walkthrough of creating a table for a custom post type. Now here are some observations and comments. As we saw during the video, Ninja Table Pro has a ton of features. And I've noticed when using the table builder that there are several tabs, and on any one tab there may be submenus, and each submenu may expose different features. And then there might be additional features exposed when you click on an icon. So sometimes you need to search around in order to locate a feature or function. However, once you get your bearings, creating tables is pretty straightforward. The transform value for a column is very powerful. I think Ninja Tables uses a library that's compatible with Excel so that you're able to use many of the Excel formula functions. I've used this feature a fair amount and I'm impressed with it. I'm also impressed with how easy it is to add basic front end filters, sorting, and search to a table. I own other WordPress table plugins, but I've always been able to do what I needed with Ninja Tables Pro. Over the years, I've contacted support a couple of times and found that the team was always helpful and went the extra distance to help. In addition to Ninja Tables Pro, I've used several other WP Managed Ninja plugins on my sites. I think that speaks to the level of respect and trust I have in this team. So that's my look at Ninja Tables Pro. There's a text summary of the video available on the WebTNG website along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.